let us begin with medieval india right medieval indian history right from this area you can get at least four to five question in your pre examination okay along with ancient <laughs> india it is nearly 10 question only for the pt okay but whatever we study about the culture of medieval india it becomes relevant for mains also okay so in this session my focus would be to make you capable both for the pt and mains correct along with class you should also take help from a book written by satish chandra old ncert okay satish chandra he has written a book on medieval india class 11th this is old ncert okay so you have to purchase this book right now once you say medieval india it means a history of two different dynasties one was delhi sultanate from 1206 to 1526 the first phase and the second phase came to emerge in 1526 up to 1858 the end of mughal empire in india okay this is mughal dynasty mughal dynasty means the medieval india is all about the history of two dynasties one led by the sultans of delhi and second led by the mughal emperors okay so first of all we have to see the background of delhi sultanate listen first and then write delhi sultanate in the beginning of 13th century you can see here beginning of 13th century it was not all of sudden the foundation of delhi sultanate was not accidental it was not all of sudden rather it was a logical culmination of two expedition made made by the two turkish invaders in india one was mahmud ghazni and second was muhammad gori so this delhi sultanate was a logical culmination of two military expedition undertaken by two turkish invaders ghazni and gori and then result was the foundation of delhi sultanate is it correct means first of all we have to focus on those background which became instrumental to create delhi sultanate in 13th century in 13th century listen first and then write this man was mahmud ghazni mahmud ghazni okay from afghanistan from afghanistan he belongs to yamini dynasty yamini dynasty he belongs to yamini dynasty he was a turkish he was a turkish he was turkish okay and he was the first muslim ruler who took the title of sultan sultan and since then it became a fashion of all the rulers of delhi sultanate to have this title sultans of delhi sultanate he was the first man to take this title of sultan and since then 
it became historical tradition of all sultans of delhi to have this title okay his mission was three three mission he had to make expedition towards india three goals number one gold gold to get gold the fabulous wealth of india the fabulous wealth of india to achieve the fabulous wealth of india by making such military expedition first goal was to get gold gold okay second god means islam expansion of islam towards india to make kafirs of hindustan to accept islam okay gold and then god and number 3 glory glory become famous among the muslim to expand the boundary of islam towards kafirs i mean hindustan number 1 to get gold number 2 god islam number 3 glorious chapter in the history of muslims first man to expand the domain of islam towards a region which was outside the ambit of islam outside the ambit of islam hindustan was never a area of islam okay only three goals he had in his mind when he made a military expedition towards india but despite a glorious military journey in hindustan he never entertained to create empire in india no empire in india despite having such a glorious military success against the hindu rulers of india because he was interested to create such empire in central asia rather than in india central asia empire would be built by him in central asia rather than in india because central asia seems to be close to his culture language tradition culture and that's why his goal was to loot india and create a part towards central asia only loot india plunder india so that this wealth could support him towards central asia is it correct correct it is said by historian that this man undertook 17 military expedition in india 1717 17 military expedition towards india but famous among them was number 1 1014 towards thaneswar haryana region thaneswar thaneswar one 1018 and 19 towards what bundelkhand bundelkhand and before bundelkhand in 1016 and 17 towards kanauj and mathura kanauj and mathura listen me attentively thaneswar 14 1014 in 1000 16 17 towards kanauj mathura and then 18 19 bundelkhand and then famous was in 1025 towards somnath in gujarat ruled by a hindu ruler bhim first the man was bhim first he was a chalukya rajput ruler but he was unable to check the tempest of expedition made by gajni and he was shattered and then he came back to gajni once again once again he came to india in 1027 to punish jat to punish jat only to punish and this became the last historic journey of gajni towards hindustan towards hindustan 
since the man was not having desire to create empire in India, and that's why he never made any such effort to create empire in India. He remained satisfied by looting India, looting India. Despite his intention, he maintained some possession in Punjab and Multan region as a way, as a launching pad to attack India whenever he desired. Only Multan and Punjab remained a part of his empire. Rather, except this, he never made any intention, any effort to create empire in India. I said you earlier, his main goal was to loot India and just to have support towards his vision of extension of his empire towards Central Asia. But this man exposed the military weaknesses of Hindustan. This man exposed how India was weak to check such penetration of a Muslim ruler towards India. Because none of them in those times were in a position to check this frequent penetration made by Muhammad Ghazni towards Hindustan. And as a result, after 175 years, Second expedition took place led by Gori, which ultimately culminated in the foundation of Delhi. Right? Okay? Okay? Next point. This is 1175. This is 1191. 1192, 1194, and then the foundation of Delhi, Shatanath. The man was Muhammad Ghori. The man was Muhammad Ghori. Also known as Muhammad bin Sam. Muhammad bin Sam. This man is also known as Muhammad bin Sam, also known as Muhammad Gori. Okay. He belongs to Sansbani dynasty. Sansbani dynasty. He belongs to Sansbani dynasty. Sansbani dynasty of Gore region. Of Gore region in Afghanistan. Ghazni belongs to Yamini dynasty and he belongs to Sansbani dynasty and both of them were Turkish. Turkish. Okay. This man unlike Ghazni was having four intention, having four ambition. Number one, to loot India. Number two, to create a space for Islam, I mean God in Hindustan as did British in 18th century and 19th century for Christianity, for Christianity. And third was to have glory and fourth, the foundation of Delhi, Shatanat. Okay? This man, listen attentively, this man first of all started historic journey against a Muslim in Multan. And he was shattered. He was shattered. And then he started second journey towards a Chalukya ruler in 1178, Gujarat. Gujarat. Second journey of Gori towards Gujarat. Ruled by Bhim II. Ruled by, listen me. Ruled by Bhim II, but he got debacle in the hand of Mul Raj II, unlike Mahmud Ghazni. It was the first debacle, it was the first defeat of Gori in the hand of a Rajput Hindu ruler in Gujarat. And then Gori decided to change the way of expedition. 
and he decided to take the same way taken by Gajani and that was Khyber Pass. That was Khyber Pass. That was Khyber Pass. Means the northwest part of India. Because this invasion was led by Gori from Gomal Pass. From Gomal Pass. Is it clear? Gomal Pass. And, and so when he got defeat, he decided to take another expedition by Khyber Pass. That was once taken by Gajne. Correct? Then after, in 1191, he got second defeat in the hand of Chauhan ruler. Chauhan ruler in Rajasthan. Prithvi Raj Chauhan. And this became the second defeat of Gori in the hand of a Rajput ruler. But he was not frustrated, not desperate. He was destined to create something new in Hindustan. He was destined to create something new in Hindustan. Then he came back once again and defeated Chauhan. And then the history of India started changing as history of India once again changed in 1526, 1527 against Ibrahim Lodi and Rana Sangha. Rana Sangha. The same condition was repeated. Khanwa, Khanwa decided the fate of Rajput for Babur and Tarain de decided the fate of Rajput in the hand of Gori. In the hand of Gori. Because Chauhan was the most reputed military commander in northern India and his debacle was equal to debacle of all Hindu rulers in northern India. In northern India. In northern India, because there was no one who could shake this ambitious race of Gori in 12th century, except Chauhan, and who was shattered, who was eliminated in the way of Gori. Correct? Khanwa and Tarain both have the same. Both have the same. Khanwa between Babur and Rana Sangha, Tarain between Chauhan and Gori. Result was the same. Creation of Delhi Shatnath and creation of Mughal Empire. Both are the same. Okay, right? Then, in 1194, he once again came to India and defeated Jai Chand in the war of Chandavar. In the war of Chandavar. And then after rest work of Gori was accomplished by a military genius Abak who led the foundation of Delhi Shatna in 1206. <laughs> right? Rest of work was accomplished by Abak in born genius slave of Gori to create empire in Hindustan for his master Gori. But unfortunately, Gori failed to become the founder of Delhi Shatnath. That credit was taken by his able, capable, genius military commander, Abak. And since then, the history of Delhi is known as the history of Delhi Shatnath. Correct? Okay? So, we can say that the foundation of Delhi Shatnath was not accidental, rather it was a logical culmination of all those events that were that were started by Gajani and then Gauri. Is it correct? I should go ahead. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. Right. <laughs> right. the heading. The foundation of Delhi Shatnath. The foundation of Delhi Shatnath. The foundation of Delhi Shatnath. The, 
then write the background then write the background of delhi satnath the background the background of delhi satnath then write the military expedition of expedition of the military expedition of mahmud gajni mahmud gajni also called gajnavi gajni or gajnavi both are same gajnavi both are same okay mahmud gajni or gajnavi both are same now keep on writing one by one he belongs to yamini dynasty yamini dynasty see on the board and then write yamini dynasty he belongs to yamini dynasty established by alaptagin alaptagin established by alaptagin alaptagin a l a p t g i n alaptagin then after subukta gin subukta gin subukta subukta gin al alapta gin then after subukta gin he succeeded subukta gin okay next in 998 ad in 998 ad mahmud gajni mahmud gajni became a sultan of gajni mahmud gajni became a sultan of gajni mahmud gajni became a sultan of gajni in 998 ad okay next point next the main goal of gajni the main goal of gajni the objective of gajni okay the objective of gajni make a triangle like this that was 3g 3g gold glory and god gold glory and god his mission was to get gold glory and god okay okay next the main military expedition of the main military expeditions of gajani 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 right first number 1 1001 one. 1001 first expedition 1001 against jayachand sorry jaypal jaypala against jaypala against jaypala in northwest frontier regions of india in northwest frontier regions of india first expedition was against jaypala in northwest frontier regions of india okay number 2 1014 1014 in thaneswar in thaneswar in thaneswar next 1016 and 17 in kanauj plus mathura kanauj plus mathura 
कन्नौज प्लस मथुरा नंबर फोर 1018 एंड 19 बुंदेलखंड 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 नंबर फाइव 1025 सोमनाथ 1025 सोमनाथ रूल्ड बाय रूल्ड बाय ए हिंदू राजपूत रूलर रूल्ड बाय ए हिंदू राजपूत रूलर भीम फर्स्ट सी भीम फर्स्ट रूल्ड बाय ए हिंदू राजपूत रूलर भीम फर्स्ट भीम फर्स्ट फर्स्ट ओके नेक्स्ट एंड लास्ट पॉइंट कल्चरल अचीवमेंट ऑफ कल्चरल अचीवमेंट ऑफ गजनी 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 राइट फर्स्ट महमूद गजनी महमूद गजनी गेव पैट्रोनेस टू गेव पैट्रोनेस टू गेव पैट्रोनेस टू मेनी स्कॉलर्स गेव पैट्रोनेस टू मेनी स्कॉलर्स गेव सेल्टर टू मेनी स्कॉलर्स इन हिज कोर्ट इन हिज कोर्ट इन हिज कोर्ट लाइक Alberoni, Alberoni, like Alberoni, like Alberoni. Sorry, Alberoni, Alberoni, who wrote a book, Kitabul Hind, Kitabul Hind, who wrote a book, Kitabul Hind, in Arabian language, in Arabian language. In Arabian language, Alberoni who wrote a book Kitabul Hind in Arabian language, that is supposed to be a splendid creation. That is supposed to be, that is supposed to be, an excellent creation. That is supposed to be an excellent creation. That is supposed to be an excellent creation, which captures. Which captures India of India of eleventh century, which captures India of eleventh century, which captures the India of eleventh century. Okay, next, next, Utbi, Utbi, right? Next, a scholar Utbi. He was, he was a historian. Utbi was a historian. Utbi was a historian in the court of Mahmud Ghazni. Utbi was a historian in the court of Mahmud Ghazni. Mahmud Ghazni. And last point. Firdausi. 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 wrote a book shahnama shahnama firdausi wrote a book shahnama who also belongs to the court of who also belongs to the court of firdausi wrote a book shahnama belongs to the court of mahmud ghazni belongs to the court of mahmud ghazni belongs to the court of mahmud gazni okay so this is all about the achievement of mahmud gazni and always remember two name first alberoni the most excellent creation kitabul hind and second is shahnama written by firdausi both belongs in the court of belongs to the court of mahmud gazni okay नेक्स्ट 
नेक्स्ट मोहम्मद गोरी मोहम्मद गोरी मोहम्मद गोरी राइट मोहम्मद गोरी आल्सो नॉन एज मोहम्मद बिन शाम अल्सो नॉन एज मोहम्मद बिन शाम अल्सो नॉन एज मोहम्मद बिन शाम एस ए एम मोहम्मद बिन शाम ओके राइट डाउन ही बिलोंग्स टू सन्स बनी डायनेस्टी ही बिलोंग्स टू सन्स बनी सन्स बनी डायनेस्टी He belongs to Sans Bani dynasty. Sans Bani dynasty of Gore, of Gore region, of Gore region, which belongs to who belongs to Sans Bani dynasty of Gore region, which was once a part of Gajani dynasty, which was once a part of Gajani dynasty, which was once a part of Gajani dynasty. Gore was a part of gajani dynasty is it clear my dear once it was a part of gajani dynasty means this region was under the subjection of mahmud gajani when gajani was no more then this sansmani dynasty came to emerge in gor region okay right his objective his objective his objective right right now to create to create a turkish dynasty a turkish dynasty in india to create a turkish dynasty in india to create a turkish dynasty in india next military expedition military expedition military expedition of gori military expeditions of gori right 1175 against multan multan ruled by ruled by a local सिया रूलर रूल्ड बाई ए लोकल सिया रूलर रूल्ड बाई ए लोकल सिया रूलर माई डियर ही वॉज सैटर्ड आई मीन ही वॉज डिफीटेड ओके नेक्स्ट एलेवन सेवेंटी एट अगेंस्ट गुजरात रूल्ड बाई मूल राज second mul raj second ruled by mul raj second a hindu rajput in bracket chalukya chalukya ruler a hindu rajput in bracket chalukya ruler mul raj second and gori got defeat and gori got defeat gori got defeat in the hand of mulraj second gori got defeat in the hand of mulraj second is it clear gori got defeat in the hand of mulraj second the first defeat of gori next in 1191 